gummy bear. It's the internet, you're busy, let's do this for July 20th, 2022. For the next hour or so, let me help you sort through the world of gaming on Game Mess Mornings Live with me, Jeff Grubb. Today, John Romero is making a new first-person shooter, so suck it down, Daikatana. But first, please join me in, in welcoming today's co-host to Game Mess Mornings. It's Lucy James from Giant Bob and GameSpot, everybody. Lucy, how's it going? I good morning. It's going well, although you might have to... First of all, there's some kind of truck outside. I'm sure. Also, my cat is being so loud this morning. We, I mean, if you were watching in the in the little kind of tech uh, mic test stuff, you'll have maybe heard it. So that's another thing that I'm battling against this morning. I mean, shout like shout out to cats. Cats having a big week. Uh, they oh, are yeah. no longer gonna uh, lay down. They're gonna stand up for their rights now that Stray is so successful. Uh, cats finally gonna speak up for themselves. That's uh. A, a big thing happening this week. I, I know. Are you, you been playing any of that Stray? Been touching I that Stray have. at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was playing it on PC the other day, um, and I'm actually, I actually upgraded my PS Plus. So I like this is so bad. I spend all day at my desk, and uh, I had a code for PC, and I was playing it, and I was like, yeah, this is great. But I could be playing this on my couch, so I upgraded my premium to premium, and so I downloaded it yesterday. But I'm not letting myself play it until I finish. A Plague Tale, which I thought I was going to finish last night, but then I didn't. I think I'm right at the end. Um, and so that's probably going to be my my night tonight, is hopefully starting straight on PS5. But I loved what I played on PC. Yeah. So I, cute. I got it um, kind of running right on Steam Deck now. That took a little bit of, of doing where it was like, okay, I want to play this on a couch too, but I want to be like laying prone and just kind of barely holding a thing over my head, and that's how I want to play. Uh, yeah. But it was like, you know, the frame rate was pretty rough. Uh I kind of got, got I use some of the, uh, the the Steam Deck settings to really dial that in, like um, half rate shading, a few other things worked. So now it's like a pretty, a solid, it's like a, you know, a, a near 40, 45 frames per second most of the time. There's still a few dips here or there, but uh, it's playable at least, and that's kind of how I've been playing yeah, it. But I'm getting playable. into it. It's fun. I, I enjoy it. I think it's not what I was expecting. I think I was expecting more of like um, an open world, explore the world as a cat where... You know, you could jump anywhere and you'd be able to traverse anywhere. And it's much more like, ah, you're, you're going to, there are spots where we have these things, these spots set up that are context sensitive and you'll only be able to jump there and you're kind of looking around for those. It's still really fun though. I'm still really yeah. enjoying it. Uh, and, and the cat animations are so good. As a cat person, I am very much into it. So yeah, I, I haven't played it in front of my animal that yet though. He, he's not seen it. So oh. I'm going to maybe pull that off today and see what he thinks. You should, there's a whole, there's a whole Twitter account called like yeah. cats watching stray. And yep. I, I post, I posted mine on Monday. Mine was peanut was on the couch and just cause there is like the dedicated meow button. And she was just absolutely furious when I kept playing it. She was just like <laughs> looking up at me and I was like, it's okay. It's fine. And she was like, no. <laughs> oh, cats. Oh. All right, before we get into the mess, let's explain ourselves. Each weekday, I, Jeff Grubb, will help you piece your gaming life back together. That includes breaking news, the catch-up, where we discuss the biggest topics consuming the lives of gamers everywhere, and maybe even bring some of our own original reporting. For all these topics, I'll get the input of a bona fide expert who will make me look smart. If you are watching live on Twitch, welcome. You can always listen to the show later on podcast feeds by searching for Game Mess Mornings or find the RSS on GiantBomb.com. You can also catch the show later with chapters and timestamps on YouTube. If you are watching on there, please be sure to hit that like button. It helps people find the show. Okay, uh, we have a lot to get into, so let's start the morning mess with Xbox is expanding its Discord integration. They announced this this morning. This is from the Xbox blog. All your friends and communities are now in one place. Get ready to connect with your Discord friends and communities on Xbox. Discord voice chat is coming to Xbox Series X and S and Xbox One consoles. You will be able to chat with anyone on Discord via voice channels or group calls directly from your console, making it easy to connect with friends across mobile, Xbox, and PC. The update will start rolling out to Xbox Insiders today and will be available soon for everyone. There's a little bit more to this. I think the big thing for me is, uh, let's see, uh, down in like link your Discord account to your Xbox and they explain how to do it. Uh, they say once your Discord account is linked to Xbox, you can hop into a channel uh, you, you'd like to talk in using Discord just as you normally would with any other Discord integration. This is just now Discord on Xbox, like the full, you know, full fat Discord. 
I'm pretty excited about this as someone who has um, several channels or several several different uh, Discord servers I am, I'm in, um, and like and yet there's still people in that in those Discord servers who do primarily play on Xbox, and then once that starts happening, there's like this weird disconnect of people. I, I guess I'll get on my phone and talk to you there. So I'm excited. This solves a problem for me in my community. Yeah, I'm kind of thrilled. Like Discord has fast quickly become like the thing that I use to talk to people the most. I'm very excited mm -hmm. that it is coming to Xbox just because it's so much easier, like just to hop in with people. And especially like, um, you know, I don't know. I, I add a lot of people, like I have a lot of um, people on my friends list, but I remember when we were trying to play Halo Infinite um, across PC and Xbox, it didn't work as smoothly. Um, I remember like we had a couple issues getting into a party for some reason, and it all depends on like, if you are friends with a person, if a party is closed and stuff, yeah, you can work through that stuff. But if you're already in a Discord server, like we have a server with a bunch of my friends where it's just sort of, oh, shall we play this game? Yes, I will see you there. Whereas if you could just hop into a Discord rather than have to kind of, I don't know, take another step to figure stuff out. That's that's very helpful. I love yeah. It. Ch Chat points out it's not full Discord in terms of like having like the text channels and the video stuff. So you're not going to be able to like, yeah, plug in your keyboard and, and keep up with like all the text the stuff that's happening. You're not going to see the several people are typing thing, but all of the audio stuff seems to be there though. So the, all the audio channel features and stuff. And that's like, the, uh, that would be the first, if they had to like pick one of the features to bring, that was the first one that I would want anyhow. Um, and this still solves my major problem with having different people on different platforms. Uh, this, you know, kind of br br keeps bringing people together. Like we uh, we've been moving in this direction where, you know, cross-platform play is one thing, but cross-platform sort of just uh, communities is uh, still has been a hassle. This seems mm -hmm. to solve some of those issues. I'll say that I think um, one of the reasons Microsoft is probably moving in this direction is that this serves their larger goal of mm -hmm. getting people encouraged to play games on Game Pass. And one of the key ways to do that is through word of mouth and having people in a Discord say, hey, I'm, you know, come play with me. I'm on Xbox Live right now play, using this game that I got in Xbox Game Pass. Why don't you just go get Xbox Game Pass as well? It's this really good deal. And you could just play with me and we could continue our conversation. Uh, when you had to be like, okay, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to go, should we go start an Xbox Live party? Like th that, just that little bit of friction might be enough to derail that sort of word of mouth process that was happening there. Now it's just like, hey, yeah, we're in this Discord together. We hang out here every day. We end up playing games on Steam all the time. I convince you to buy games on Steam all the time because we we found out we really like playing games together. This sort of facilitates that in the direction of, okay, now if you play on Xbox, you could still be 100% part of that conversation and part of that, uh, uh, that you know, moving from one game to the next, even if that game is on your Xbox and on Xbox Game Pass. So, uh, yeah, this makes a lot of sense to me. I'm, I'm not too surprised to see this happening. I um, never messed around with the Discord integration on PlayStation. Uh, do you know if it's anything similar that to this? Happened? or is... Yeah, that did happen, right? Because they, they made a big deal about it, right? They, like, they were like, Discord. Yeah, so they, they were like, hey, we're doing this big integration. And then the integration came. And I think it might have just been like, um, like rich, rich information. What is it called when like they tell you what you're doing? You can just link your accounts. And that just says like, okay, this person is on their PlayStation playing a game. Just shows game status and PSN ID. It's a, it's a fucking well, That's nightmare. all that that was? Yeah, I'm looking it up. Hang on. Uh, popular, popular communication device service will integrate with your social experience beginning early next year. That was from May 2021. Yeah, so th like that was... The, I remember they making a but big deal it, about it. And then it doesn't it came have out. chat or anything. It, it doesn't have chat or just... anything. I, okay. But they, they like... Early on, they made it sound like, like it was going to be a serious integration with Discord. I bet that yeah. stuff is still coming. Like... The, uh, this, like the original Discord integration with Xbox was very similar. It was, uh, you know, rich profile information. Like, hey, I'm on my Discord on PC. Someone on Xbox just uh, had linked their account and now they're playing Halo, excuse me, Halo or whatever. I could see them playing Halo on their Xbox on Discord. And that was kind of it. That seems like that's where PlayStation is, is at, but now yeah. Xbox has got full voice integration. So I would assume PlayStation's going to get that soon as well. And then- uh, You would hope, unless, unless Microsoft paid a pretty penny and we're like don't yeah like maybe that was like maybe that's part of it maybe it's part of like a close relationship of you know hey come use microsoft as your cloud services and stuff for any of your new features and we can help you figure that out in the meantime why don't we just test this out on xbox like that stuff could be what's happening here 
Um, I, I still think like Sony has a uh, investment in Discord. I believe they like part of that like raising money not too long ago. So mm. Sony's still very close with Discord. I think the next thing here though is when does the switch or switch to get discord instead of just that stupid phone app right I, that's what we need I, <laughs> Ninte nintendo would never like they they're just like no you get to use our app it's <laughs> fine everyone you don't need this we you have discord at home never. yeah we don't need it you don't yeah. need it oh, no. i mean i think uh, yeah i wonder if maybe with regard to playstation maybe it was just a little bit more difficult to implement yeah, I think which is kind of always the big thing for PS3, right? That um, you know, that I mean, I know PS4 and 5 kind of changed a lot, right. and it's much like more that, developer the, the friendly. The legacy code of a PlayStation Network from the PS3 maybe still holding some things back. That I mean, that was maybe. always a huge issue. I, that might be, could be what's happening here. Maybe, yeah. Um, it, you know, Sony is um, a leader in terms of console sales and uh, keeping people in their platform is something that they've made clear is important to them. And when cross-platform play was coming up, they're like, oh, we gotta keep people safe from those degenerates on Xbox. And really it was about, well, if this is gonna happen, people, someone's gonna have to pay us. And who's gonna pay us? It's not gonna be the players, right? So if you wanna make Borderlands cross-platform, well, show up and pay, uh, you know, developer of the game. Uh, I think that this could still be some uh, like a legacy of that as well of them being like, hey, we already have people on PlayStation Network and they can have all these features and we want them playing with other PlayStation people. We don't want them seeing their friends on PC and sort of maybe being drawn in that direction. That's I think that's backwards thinking mostly, but um, it could still be the uh, you know, the, the decision, the, the factor here that is preventing them from going f full bore with Discord on PlayStation. Or maybe they will, and in next week they'll announce all this stuff is coming to PlayStation as well. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah, I mean, it would be it would be strange for them to for dis to discount PC completely, given the fact that they are putting more of their first party stuff on PC. Yep. But maybe maybe it's just you know there's always factors that we're not necessarily aware of. Hopefully, it will come to PlayStation eventually, just because it's useful. Discord yeah. is so useful. <laughs> It's just a very, e like, it's a very easy way to, like, I never would have had, like, uh, like the game mess community, like, that I have now if it weren't for an easy platform that is free and easy to access on phone and PC uh, for everyone. Uh, so, yeah, it just completely changed everything for me. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Paradox says Bloodlines 2 is in good hands, but won't be shown at PDXCon 2022. Uh, this is from Tom Ivan at VGC. The sequel was almost canceled last year after being pulled from its original developer. Uh, in response to requests for news about the game, Wester said on Twitter on Tuesday that Bloodlines 2 is in good hands. However, he also told fans that the title isn't due to be shown at the upcoming uh, convention that it's having in September. Uh, the game is in good hands, and we look forward to showing you more when the team and the game is ready. Uh, but, but Bloodlines 2 was initially being developed by Hardsuit Labs and was scheduled for release in 2020. However, in August 2020, the, the action RPG sequel was delayed to 2021, and both its creative director and lead narrative designer, narrative designer were fired. In February 2021, Paradox delayed Bloodlines 2 again and announced it had pulled development from Hardsuit Labs entirely. So, they've... Oof. Yes, yeah, so this is like it's, this is one of these games that people always asked about on Grub Snacks and stuff like that. Where like, hey, what's what's going on? It's like I, I don't know. It seems like something's still happening, but overall, like there's not a lot of uh, you know much word on it. One thing uh, you know that did seem like it was likely is they could have been canceled, and the sequel was almost canceled, but they seem to have found a pathway forward for this game. Um, I, I don't know. Is this the kind of thing, uh, Lucy, that you think a, a studio and a publisher can kind of come back from such rocky development and actually put out a game that is worth anyone's time? I mean, I'm I'm looking through the VGC article right now, and I'm like, who did they even give it to? No one knows. Like, yeah. it even says at the bottom of the article, like, well, good West hands, said, but good hands. Yeah, maybe that's the name of the team. Good, maybe it should be capital hands. G, yeah, capital H. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> West has said that it is a very reputable and talented developer. Yeah, what, what do we it? do with that information? Tell, just tell us what's going on. Cool. I'm sure you said that Hot Suit Labs were a very talented and reputable developer, <laughs> and then you kind of yanked everything away. Yeah. I don't know what to think about it, honestly, because it's like, I, I really want to know just how badly it was going at Hot Suit Labs for the creative director and the lead narrative to be fired and then the game to be yanked completely. Like... Yeah, I mean, Mutton Panda says, what possible reason is there for not saying who's making it? 
it's uh, yeah. really it's really weird unless the only real thing that i can think of that's a similar thing and this game hasn't come out uh what do you call it dead island 2 right yes jeez because it right? was with dead island was with um techland techland then it went to jaeger then right. it's now with sumo Right. I don't think Jaeger even exists anymore, right? Yeah. I don't think Jaeger exists anymore. Then it's a sumo. Oh, no, didn't Jaeger do the cycle or something? Oh, or maybe some, that, of, okay, some of yes. the people from that team did. Right, that could be right, yes. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. It's such a weird one. Like, and but at least I just know we're going to get a fantastic expose in maybe a year and a bit, which would be fantastic. Right. But, like, who do, who do you think would be a studio who would make it? Hideo Kojima. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kojima uh, operating under the name Hassan. Uh, he's gonna finally. But this is the this is abandoned. Everybody. Oh my god! This is abandoned. This, this we've is abandoned. we've done it. We're at the bottom of the mystery. <laughs> oh my I, I don't god. I don't know. Like I mean, it's very like a lot of studios are very busy. If you're a studio with any sort of track record, you could probably get work right now. Either working on a work for hire thing, or working in a mm -hmm. support studio, or pitching your stuff. And publishers were really looking for a lot of content because there's a lot of places to put your content. Uh, you know, the, not the least of which is like a, a subscription platform. So it, like studios are busy. And so where do you like when you uh, have this project and it's falling apart and then you look up, and you're like, OK, uh, who can come work on this for us? And basically probably have to start from scratch. Uh, that's a desperate situation. And I bet one of the issues is that uh, any studio that would be stepping in would be like, hey, you look pretty desperate. Uh, we demand a premium. And that probably means that they're looking for maybe a little bit more of a creative way to make this happen, working with a studio that maybe doesn't have a track record and maybe trying to bring in someone who can oversee them and manage them, make sure. I mean, there's a lot of factors here that could make this be like, we are still figuring this out. But now he says it's in good hands. Uh, and it's like he, he could have just said, listen, the future's uncertain. We were not sure. Um, we're going to try to make something happen here, but no promises. Mm -hmm. Saying it's in good hands means like, OK, Full steam ahead. Something's eventually going to come out here. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like uh, they need to follow up soon with actual concrete information. Although he says it's not going to be at their convention. So who it's knows really when. Good. Like even even not not like a, you know, just just a, a reveal of who's making it could maybe assuage a lot of not necessarily fears around the game. But, you know, this is going to be this is going to be the conversation about it now. They're not getting the chance to change the narrative. It's basically now it is, oh, the game was so bad it got shit canned along with the creative director and lead narrative. Like, that's the narrative now, is that this game was unsalvageable at that point and then it was yanked away from someone right. and now it's given a Something went could, so rotten, yeah. They could, they could change the narrative and be like, okay, it's with this team, it's with X or Y or Z, and, you know, people would actually get excited again and... There's a lot of unraveling to do, I guess, because didn't they announce, like, there was trailers and stuff, and there was kind of an announcement about what the game was actually going to be. Yes, absolutely. And now, yeah, it's it's such a strange one. And then they released... Especially the, because they have their own convention. Right, yes. They released that, uh, like, Battle Royale vampire game, right? That was not too long ago, oh, uh, based, based um, on the Masquerade, or, yeah. Swan Song? No, that was the RPG. Yes, yeah, so, but it's something like that. That's close. I can't. I can't remember. But either way, yeah. So they have other stuff happening with this brand. Um, Bloodlines too, though, still missing in action, other than being in good hands. Okay. Blood, blood hunt. Blood Thank hunt. You. There you go. Very good. Uh, all right. Let's see here. Hello Games announces endurance update for No Man's Sky. Um, the, the, here's some like details from the YouTube video description. I believe dramatically expand your capital ship and update 3.94 endurance. Introducing deeper and more varied freighter-based building, including exterior platforms and catwalks, enhanced nebula and deep space storms, fleets of organic frigates, and so much more. Um, freighter bases have been completely reinvented with a huge array of new parts and themed rooms, allowing players to quickly assemble a visually varied and distinctive home in the stars. These pre-decorated rooms can be further customized or players can use empty rooms, uh, room variants, and take co total control over decoration. Um, they're also going to have stuff like specialist crew wandering around in uh, in, in your freighters and stuff like that. Basically, they want to make this feel much more like um, the Starship Enterprise. Basically, it will make it feel a little bit more star like Star Trek. Um, I got the trailer playing here. Uh, no Man's Sky, another big free update, Lucy. Um, how? When's the last time you checked in on this game? 
2016. <laughs> no. Is it, could anything get you back? I always wonder, like, there's like, a, so there's got to be, per, like, there's uh, windows of the audience, right? Percentages of mm. the audience are like, okay, I'll check back in when you do something I'm interested in. And other part is like, I'll just check in on every update because I, I love this game. But there's got to be a significant chunk that is like, I tried it when it came out, I've moved on, and nothing will ever bring me back. And yet they keep doing the same strategy. It must be working for them, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm really thrilled for Hello Games because I was I was there, man. I was in the trenches when uh, No Man's Sky <laughs> launched. I remember getting the code in, and I remember thinking, oh, no, is this not what we thought it was? And anyway, and just to, just to be able to see the way that they've turned it around, um, and they seem to be pushing out these meaningful updates. And I swear they just had a yeah. pretty meaningful update. Um, so the fact that they are still kind of working on this game, people are really happy with it. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm thrilled for them. It, it is the kind of game that I just, I, if I think I'm going to sit down with a game, it's not one that springs to mind. It's, right. you know. Um, probably because I'm at a point now where I kind of just, I just want to finish games and for a game like No Man's Sky, where there is technically, I guess, no ending in sight, it's potentially limitless. It's just not what I'm looking for right now. I need the structure. I need, I need the, I need the trophy saying you completed it. You did it. Well done. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm usually right there with you. I think uh, there are occasionally times when it's like, okay, it probably is time to check back in. And the, the good news there is with No Man's Sky, especially it builds up over time and now it's going to be so much different than the last time I played. It'll be, it will feel like a whole new game in some ways. Um, th this is the thing though, like at a certain point they could have taken, uh, you know, 10 of these updates, right. And done what the overwatch is trying to do and say, Oh, this is no man's sky two, And here's an expansion pack and you can pay for it. And it and does, like, um, does, does that marketing never work for you? Cause I think like, Destiny 2 has had so many updates and I'm not mm -hmm. going back to it, but if they put out a Destiny 3 that is essentially the same thing, but like, you know, updated in some key ways, I probably would ch check in on it. And I don't know what the mm. difference really is anymore. I mean, the, Destiny, I would say, and I was I was just talking about this with Skill Up the other day, and like, he, I, I asked him, because I, I love the shooting in Destiny. I was never really into the um, story or anything. And I asked him, is now the time to get back into Destiny 2? And he went, no. <laughs> They'll do it because because the thing the way that Destiny 2's model works is that they uh, they gate content they vault it and That's so right. there's stuff in there that you'll just never be able to play and so I'm right there with you if there was a Destiny 3 where it basically starts afresh and I could get in on the ground floor yes that's what would get me back in whereas with No Man's Sky it doesn't it doesn't need to do that and so I wonder if yeah to kind of get public interest like as in the the broader public interest right. maybe a, a whack a two on there we'll see how it works for overwatch when it comes out in october yeah but it's it's one of those games yeah like i said i'm thrilled for the team i'm probably right not gonna play. I, I and i think like uh there's a part of that that team that still feels uh, guilty a little bit maybe it's not the right word but feels uh, um like they do they need to make up for the launch of the game and the game was so successful even despite it kind of launching in this state that was not living up to expectations and i think that was true for our expectations but i think it's true internally for hello games expectations and so and yet the game sold like it rushed to like five million copies sold or something like that for a smaller Huge. game i yeah. you know Perfect. i think they small studio right they were looking around and be like we, we never have to work again a day in our life and so what did they do they immediately went back to work and have worked every single day of their life to make this mm -hmm. game sort of live up to what it did in terms of its sales numbers and there's a part of me that just really super duper respects that and wants me to be like okay i just want to go play the game to see a, the kind of game made by people like that like that's uh, encouraging to me uh, let's see. Zynga's Star Wars Hunters has been pushed back to 2023 by Chris Moyes at Destructoid. Developer Zynga has announced that Star Wars Hunters has been delayed and will no longer meet its original cited 2022 release date. The arena shooter will now launch on mobile and Nintendo Switch platforms at some point in 2023. The delay was announced in a statement posted by the team. We are working tirelessly to achieve our vision for Star Wars Hunters, said the studio. Our ambition is to create a competitive battle arena game that will entertain uh, enter entertain for years to come. 
to ensure we meet the high expectations we are setting setting for fans globally and ourselves as developers we have made the decision to delay the worldwide launch of star wars hunters we understand game delays are frustrating however our top priority is ensuring players will have the best possible experience in the arena um I, I I don't know, like, maybe this is just, like, uh, outside of my purview. I haven't seen a lot of people, like, saying, man, I can't wait to get my hands on Star Wars Hunters from Zynga. Well, I'm uh, watching the trailer right now just yeah. to see. Yeah, I was actually going to bring a, it up right now. Let me go ahead and we'll show this off pre, to everybody. A pre-rendered boy, so yeah. it's not really giving me anything. Right, there, and there's, like, there, you know, I could probably find some Star Wars Hunters, like, alpha gameplay out there if people wanted. Let's go ahead and see if we can pop that in here. Uh, mute that, though, in case this guy comes in and starts yelling stuff. Um, it, what? I mean, it's up for everybody now. Yeah. <laughs> it's just Greg. It, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it's not Puzzle Quest 3. Come on, Lucy. It's a completely <laughs> different mobile game. Um, it, yeah, it looks like a mobile shooter. I guess it looks a little bit more like something that could launch on a Switch, but it's not coming to Xbox and PlayStation. It's Switch and mobile. Um, I, I don't know. I, part of me is curious about this. I just, I like Star Wars enough that I'd be, I would check this out, but also, oh, we, I, oh, it got delayed. Oh, it had a 2020 new release date. I just kind of thought it was going to come out when it was going to come out. Um, so yeah, I, I, a bigger part of me is just like, I want to get to this point where we are getting all of these Star Wars games from all these other developers that aren't EA. Um, I'm looking forward to Jedi, uh, Jedi survivor. That'd be great. But like, let's see that Ubisoft game. Let's see what everyone else is working on. And that includes Zynga. Sure. Why not? Give, give this a shot. Even that Quantic Dream. Even what? the Quantic Dream game, right? Exactly. Let's see what David Cage is going to do with that oh, stupid game. Yeah. That, who knows? Yeah. You um, know what? Yeah, you, know what you know what, Jeff? I think I'm, I think I'm good to say this now. I think I'm good to announce this. I think it's okay. Um, I want to hear it. I just realized I don't care about Star Wars anymore. Yeah, that's okay. I, I mean, just can't bring myself to do it. It's the I right time can't. to 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 admit this. I, yeah, I, I don't blame it. Like, it's so easy to um for me to like go watch one of those shows and come out being like, I don't think Star Wars cares about me at, at all anymore. So why yeah. should I care about it? I mean, especially after that last uh, movie, uh, Rise of Skywalker, it was just so like, I don't even know what they're doing here. It's, yeah, it, it, it is, it's I'm so it's totally fed up fine. with people saying that like, Oh, you have to watch Obi Wan. You just have to get through these episodes right. for it to get good. And I'm I, like, mm -mm. that is a piece of media that is cruising on its name and not even attempting to be good for yeah. the audience, right? Like, if you have to wait a certain amount of episodes for it to get good, then no, it's you're not respecting my time. I'm not going to watch you. So the, the, the only yeah. Star Wars media that I would recommend to you. If you haven't played it, and you probably have, is Jedi Fallen Order. Like, I have played like it. yeah, that's like I the one thing. I, without reservation, I recommend that to most Star Wars fans and kind of people who just kind of are mm -hmm. like generally interested in the in the property. Otherwise, most other ones are just like forgettable or straight out bad or a waste of your time. Um, I think that's true for even Mandalorian to a certain extent, which I know a lot of people have a soft spot for. I don't know. Well, you I, know what I did for Mandalorian, and I don't feel good about this. I watched all of season one the beginning of season two and then the end of season two I like i missed yeah. the, like the big chunk in the middle and i was like you know what i feel fine about that yeah always should. the other way around it was like i missed the middle of one of the seasons i think it was two that's but. that's probably right I, and yeah i mean that's the the show is just they don't mean all that much the overall story it's star wars is in a weird spot definitely it is. Uh, let's see, uh, in Advanced Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp update, uh, Swedish retailer has uh, a February 24th, 2023 release date. I, I, please, please, name, please reveal the name of this Swedish retailer. <laughs> cool, Coolshop.dk. <laughs> Check out Coolshop. Let's go, let's go take a look at Coolshop here, everybody. Oh, man, Welcome. what a great name for a shop. In the Welcome UK, we've got like cool Zavi and shit, but I want <laughs> Coolshop. Uh, coolshop.dk has listed it over here at uh, uh, as February 24th. I, who knows? I, I don't think they have an, necessarily an insight into exactly what Nintendo is thinking. Um, maybe there was some mistake. Maybe Nintendo did confirm this. I actually reached out to Nintendo last week and said, hey, people have pre-orders for this game uh, and you've not given like any new information. What should they be doing with those pre-orders? Should they expect them to be fulfilled? And some people are having their pre-orders canceled by shops, I think preemptively, because they are, there's no you know, language from Nintendo about what to do here. And they're like, hey, we're gonna look into it, and I haven't heard back yet. So hopefully oh. we get back with a response from Nintendo about what's going on there. I, I know that PR is at least trying to like get an answer. Um, there might be, it might end up being no comment, um, but I think it's been, so the game was supposed to come out, what, like December of last year, then it got delayed till 
March or whatever. It was basically yeah. right when the war in Ukraine and, and Russia started. Um, and that was like, hey, this is a, it's a bad idea to put out a game about you being an invading army and taking over cities and stuff like that. It's a, it was a bad look and it was the right decision to delay it. Um, but now we just we don't know if like they intend to continue releasing it this year or if it's just like whenever the war is over or if there's some other thing that they're waiting for. And, you know, they don't have to share exactly what they're thinking there. I get that like they're just trying to uh, be sensitive here and not try to look like they're making trying to make money based on uh, uh, war or whatever. And that that's that's totally fine. But there are people with outstanding pre-orders who are standing back trying to wonder what's happening here. And, you know, as dates come out, it's like, OK, is it just going to keep being pushed back indefinitely it felt like it come out could come out the end of this year or is it february the end of the fiscal year by the end of march or something like that who knows uh do, do you think that there's any chance nintendo gives us gives us an update on what they're going to do with advanced wars anytime soon no i think i think they're in a very tough spot obviously they kind of they did do the right thing by uh kind of just saying look you know in light of everything that's happening in ukraine with the war with russia we're going to we're not going to do this right now. And, you know, I props to them for that. Obviously, there is the question of what people are going to do with their pre-orders. Nintendo are in a, a tough spot there. Like, they they cannot influence the outcome of the war um, and, you know, what's happening. Like, this is something that's bigger than a video game. Yep. Um, and so it would be good. I, they're probably not going to come out and blanket cancel everything. Um, you know, that's money that's sort of in their pocket a little bit. Um, you know, fingers crossed they will just have us. I mean, fingers crossed the war ends. <laughs> like, if we're going to be talking about any fingers crossed or anything. Um, but yeah, it's it's a weird one. Um, and and uh, Fram is asking a question. I'll get to that when we get to the grub snacks questions if we have time today. But we'll see. Um, let's see. Nintendo says uh, Fire Emblem Fates will be removed from the eShop a month before the store goes offline. So. On Bombcast yesterday for the news, we talked about how Nintendo gave confirmed dates for the uh, ending uh, the availability of the eShop on the Wii U and the Nintendo 3DS. Uh, those are going to come to an end on March 27th, 2023. Uh, basically, you just won't be able to get anything from those stores anymore at that point. And they're ending sales, I think, in August. But uh, there, there's this weird situation with Fire Emblem Fates where you could buy Fire Emblem Fates and then you need to get to chapter six before you could unlock the DLC or lock, unlock the opportunity to buy the DLC. It's 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 weird, but basically they don't want a situation where on the last day of um, of availability, you um, go ahead and you download Fire Emblem Fates, and then now you can't get access to the the chapter six stuff, the chapter post chapter six DLC uh, because you're like, oh, I'm, now I got everything. I downloaded downloaded all my stuff. They're like, no, you should download it by this date in February. So February 28th, 2023 is when they're going to stop uh, making this game available for download so that you have this built in timer of like, OK, now until the end of March, no excuse. You, sh you could have played till chapter six in that month's time to download this extra stuff. So it's it's a weird situation, uh, but also, also like the most Nintendo situation you could describe. Yes, and, right, and it's like right, and and yet like it's like okay, Nintendo, this is a weird headache. Why not just avoid this stuff and just keep this stuff online? <laughs> just keep like your Nintendo. We know we see your your publicly traded company. We know how much profit you're making. You can afford yeah. to keep these things open for quite a bit longer. Uh, it's just it's weird. I think there's a part of them that's just like we are looking ahead to the future and we are looking ahead to what we want to continue as part of our Nintendo uh, uh, like online profile system that is going to be more permanent going forward. And that's going to include everything on the switch, but everything before that needs, we just need to deprecate that, leave that stuff behind so that we can only focus on the stuff that will be part of my Nintendo going forward. So yeah, it's weird. Uh, Steam or Stray has smashed Annapurna's record uh, for concurrent Steam players. This is from Tom Ivan at VGC. According to official Steam figures, on its release day, the indie title's peak concurrent players count currently stand currently stood at sixty two thousand nine hundred and sixty three players. Only twelve games are being played by more Steam users uh, at the time of this pub uh, at the time that VGC posted this story. That was like games like Apex Legends and FIFA twenty two and Grand Theft Auto. Uh, according to independent market analyst Benji Sales, shout out to Benji. Hi, Benji. Uh, Stray has comfortably beaten Annapurna's record for concurrent players on Steam, which was previously held by 12 minutes with 8,021. Uh, behind that are Outer Wilds, 7,936, Neon White, 3,277, and Journey, 
1757 so uh, uh pretty good stuff for stray Damn. easily beating uh, annapurna's previous records right yeah, easily smashing them. Yep. Also, the fact that the, <laughs> the record was held by 12 minutes. Oh, God. Right. And but, Neon White not getting any of the respect it deserves. Come on. But, Put yeah. some respect on Neon White. I'm sorry. We're talking about cats, and mine has come up to me, and she's like, hello. Oh, you're um, talking about me, huh? Yep. Oh, you're talking about cats, is it? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm really thrilled. I'm really enjoying Stray. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be playing on my couch. Uh, but no, to see so many people play it on PC as well, when... All of the um, all of the marketing and stuff has been predominantly around PS5. Has been it's lovely and good for, good for the team because it's their debut game, right? I or, think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's a relatively small team as well. Like yeah. it's a, only a handful of people. So uh, yeah, impressive stuff. And it's like one of those games where we saw it early on, and it became this you know the, one of those indie darlings at a showcase. And so well, I hope that turns out and like becomes a thing and is like actually fun to play. And it seems like they met, well, they, they checked all those boxes. So that's pretty impressive. Doom designer John Romero has announced he's making a new first person shooter. Tom Ivan again from VGC. Doom, Quake, and Wolfenstein 3D designer John Romero has revealed that his next game will be a first person shooter built with Unreal Engine 5, which is blasphemy Ooh. but I mean, it's, yeah, fine. I mean uh, yeah blasphemy but also mm. yes yeah, mm. uh, it's a new dawn for Miro games the studio said on Tuesday we're working with a major publisher to develop John Romero's next shooter an all-new first-person shooter with an original new IP our team is expanding and we're looking for, un uh, for talented people for all positions and at all experience levels particularly those with Unreal Engine 5 experience so yeah I, I, I kind of felt like uh, the, the Romero development studio uh, did that? What was it like? Uh, the 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 uh, gangster era tactics game uh, just a few months ago? Was that earlier this year? Maybe it was late last oh, year. Oh, I uh, completely missed that. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I'm like, they're working on something, but I'm blanking on the name. And I think that was more of a Bre Brenda Ramiro joint. I think she was kind of in charge of that. Empire of Sin. Thank you, Panic Switch. Uh, Empire of Sin. And that game kind of it, it came and went a little bit. I think it was like some people were really into it. Uh, other kind of like bounced off other people. But uh, I always felt like okay. They, there's at any moment this studio is going to pull the John Romero is going to make a new first person shooter shooter rip cord, right? Like, okay, break glass in case emergency. Let's go ahead and make a shooter. It sounds like, hey, yeah, they're they're doing that now, and I'm I'm excited. I, I mean, John Romero is the kind of guy where I'll always kind of show up for what he's doing, even if half the time the games don't work for me. That's fine. He made a couple of of all time classics, uh, yep. Doom and Quake and Wolfenstein 3D. Uh, I'll, I'll show up for whatever John Romero is going to make next in the first person shooter genre for sure. Yeah, I mean, he's he's one of the people who pioneered that genre and, you know, how, you know, I, it's hard to imagine gaming without first person shooter or his influence on it. So I'm really yes. excited to see what he's going to do because yeah. the space is so different now as compared to like right. the late 80s, early 90s. It's always exciting when you hear about new games from from people like that. Right, well, there was that period where it's like, you know, Halo was the top and then Call of Duty and you couldn't imagine a world where Doom could, could be back, could, could, could come back and like be relevant and then Doom came back and was super mm -hmm. relevant and amazing and now we're at this period where it's like, eh, it feels like first person shooters should be trying some new stuff and hopefully that's exactly what's going to happen here. Yeah. From, uh, let's see, uh, No Mere Heroes 3 has been dated for PlayStation, Xbox, and PC with a new trailer. Uh, Tom Ivan again from v VGC. Publisher XSeed Games has announced plans to release No More Heroes 3 for PlayStation, Xbox, and PC on October 11th, 2022. The game will be available for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S with smart delivery support and PC via Steam and the Microsoft Store. The game will be released both digitally and as a physical day one edition, which will sell for $60. The day one edition will come with a number of physical extras, including a copy of the game, a soft cover art book, a CD with select songs from the soundtrack, a Santa Destroy uh, Biker license plate, a custom box with a new illustration by series artist Yusuke Kusaki. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I played a little bit of No More Heroes 3 on Switch and liked it fine until I think I got to the open world and I just got a little bit too bored with it. I think the open world was just a bit too uh, mundane for me, but I, you know, they, People want to play this game. People do like this game, and it'll run better on these systems than it did on the Switch, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I was just looking and seeing what GameSpot gave it because I remember we didn't score it very highly. We gave it a four. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's cool, and it's what it says 60, 60 bucks, but day one edition coming with a bunch of stuff. If you are into that. 
please be excited. I guess. Please be I don't excited. Know. <laughs> I've never played a No More Heroes. I've never played No More Heroes. But um, when is it coming this year? Oh, God, October's going to be stacked. Yep. We talked about this last more, week, didn't we? Yes, God. we did, but it keeps happening. I think I think for the next several Wednesdays, we're going to come back here. You and I, Lucy, we're going to probably another be like... Another thing. Another, another thing, thing. in October. Another thing in October. And yet another one. Um... All right. It costs $255 to unlock everything in multiverses that can't be earned by playing. Uh, this comes from Chris Scullion at VGC. The Warner Brothers Brawlers open beta is available to everyone on July 26th, but early access was made available today to those who played the closed alpha. Those who won codes via Twitch drops or those who pay for a Founders Pack bundle cost between $40 and $100. I need to play this game. I'm going to try to get into it today. Um, yeah, as the, I, I got you know. a code. I'm going to download it. I did see some very fun tweets yesterday. There was a, um, you can uh, turn on swearing or like mature uh, language. Oh like, my, okay. and this a, game seems there's a whole, good. There's a whole thing where it says, how old are you? Okay. Um, and it's something like, you know, seven through to 22 right. and then it's just like 22 plus and yeah like, oh, <laughs> and if God, you're 22 okay. plus it's like okay now bugs bunny's gonna be real racist everybody yeah. woke out <laughs> He's going to do his actual cartoon mm. re references there. Uh, as the beta stands, there are two types of currency available. Coins, which can be earned through normal gameplay, and Gleemium, which can only be bought with real money. However, right now... What? Gleemium? Gleemium. You got Good it. That's Lord. right. Right now, a sizable portion of the game's cosmetic content can be bought, only be bought with Gleemium and can't be unlocked through normal play. Gleemium comes in four packs, uh, basically up to like $50, uh, 6000 for $50 or whatever. Uh, Good Lord. The, the kinds of things it unlocks, though, are mostly character skins, ring out VX, VFX animations, taunts, sticker emotes, banners. It's a lot of cosmetic stuff. I think ideally you are uh, you can unlock most of these characters by just playing the game, it seems like. And then you're going to pick one or two characters that you are going to deck out. You are probably not going to spend a full $250, $255 to get all of these things for every single player. I mean... Maybe some people will. People, some people probably will. And in that case, they will be like, "Hey, I wish this just had a hundred dollar collector's edition." But this is where games are at now. And comparing this to that Nickelodeon one that like launched without voices, I know they added voices since then. Uh, this seems like, hey, they're kind of. There were going... no voices. Yeah, they didn't have voices for many of the Nickelodeon characters. Like Nickelodeon characters, characters that are like known for their funny standout voices. Like you go play a SpongeBob, and he'd Tom just be Kenny silent. Busy. Yeah, I and guess, I guess like, so. I don't have time for this. I think they're you just like, we're doing this the show. We're doing this on the cheap, which is like weird because that game was a premium price game. This one's free to play. And I think mm. they just have high hopes for it. And it does seem like it's really coming together. So uh, that's pretty good. I, I have a, a little game for you that we'll do in the catch up regarding uh, multiverses. But first, let's just hit this and then we'll do that. Uh, yeah. Platinum Games uh, claims it will change significantly as it hires former Nintendo executive. This is um mostly machine translated from Famitsu. Uh, but I'll, I'll do my best. They uh, they um, hired Takayo y Yamane from Nintendo, who was uh, kind of in charge of relationships with developers over Nintendo, and now he is a vice president and chief business officer at Platinum. Uh, the biggest reason is that, and this is from Yamane, uh, the biggest reason is that in my previous job for 27 years, I just turned 50 years old. I felt this this was a milestone in my life, and I thought, I want to take on another challenge. Where should I take on this challenge? What can I stay? What can I stay? At, and can I stay at my current company? Just when I was in a daze, Inaba suggested to me, "Let's do it together." Uh, the content of the proposal was extremely rewarding. I thought this is the only place to try again, so I joined Platinum Games. Um, basically, Yamani goes on to say, uh, "They're e like they have a business department that's in charge of publishing. That's where he's going to focus his efforts." Mm -hmm. Uh, and he says there aren't enough members of right now of the team to publish t titles such as the upcoming tentatively titled Project GG in house, including with like the, the plans for a global expansion of this release. So it's impossible for the current team to do this alone. So his big efforts right now is going to be expanding the publishing arm of Platinum Games. Uh, he says more more than anything, when I saw the project of uh, Pro of Project GG. I was convinced that this would be an absolutely interesting game. And on top of that, I was entrusted with publishing it in-house while thinking things are, are the best. So if we put together an organization, an organization, we will definitely sell this game very well. Uh, and we are moving forward with plans to see how far we can take it. That's why I really want people other than those in the development positions to come to Platinum Games. And again, he's referring there to bringing in people to the publishing team. Um, oh, hang on. Don't, don't forget that at the end, there's just laughs in yes, laughs, <laughs> yes 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 i always love the <laughs> yes i always imagine that's like <laughs> we're having fun uh that's what i always imagine when i read that in interviews 
Uh, um, I mean, the Platinum Games in a weird place. They earlier this year they uh, they released what was that that poorly received Babylon's Fall. Babylon's Fall. Thank Shit, you very was much. Was that this year? That was this year, and it's oh, not. God. Uh, I, that game immediately just flopped, but that was a work for hire thing. I don't think that was like that their was Square, right? Yeah, Square, and like I said, they got paid, and now they're moving on. And Platinum still got Bayonetta three coming out. That's gonna seems like the um, the make or break for them. Like that game comes out, they could still establish themselves as a premier action game developer. And if they do that, they probably can attract the talent they need to to do what they need to do and and work with other studios to publish their games or whatever. Uh, but this is a tough transition that a lot of studios have tried to do go from developer to publisher uh maybe they have an advantage by doing that in japan where um you know uh, this hasn't happened a ton before and so like they, 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 they maybe and they maybe they have the right relationships so they can make this happen but it's like oh i kind of feel like you need to just shore up your house first in terms of the games you're putting out which have been all over the map in terms of quality and really we've gone gone quite some time without a really stellar game from them so I don't know. What do you think? There's is there a chance that this transition can work for them? I mean, I hope it does. Yamane, like twenty seven years at Nintendo. I yes. know you know the work culture in Japan is you kind of stick with one company, um, and you're kind of a lifer there. And so to go from Nintendo for twenty seven years, like he obviously sees something at Platinum. Maybe what he saw was a pay rise. I don't know. But, <laughs> yep. you know, I want to take on another challenge. So I think, you know, if you're getting someone in who can potentially lead this new initiative, he seems like a pretty safe bet. It's very, very interesting move. Right. And it's like bringing in those relationships that he would have ha mm -hmm. have from working at Nintendo. Oh, that could really work for them. So yeah. we'll see. Okay. Let's get to the catch up uh, where I want to ask you a question. I want you to name, so there's a, a leak of potential characters that could be coming to Multiverses. And as a reminder, Multiverses is the WB platform fighter. So it's like uh, Super Smash Brothers from the WB universe. So uh, like uh, characters, uh, there's like characters from the Ga Game of Thrones and there is like Bugs Bunny or whatever. Okay, so apparently there's like 19 names that have been mentioned. I want to, when you guess which one of these is real, I'm gonna give you two and you gotta pick the one you think is, is in this leaked list. Okay, for the first one, Sheldon Cooper from the Bang, Big Bang Theory or Marvin the Martian from Looney Tunes? <laughs> I want to say Marvin, but God help me, it's probably Sheldon. Marvin the Martian from Looney Tunes is oh, correct thank there. Thank yes, God. There go. Oh my God. I, I, if, if Sheldon was in, I would probably just... Sheldon Cooper probably will eventually end up there. But let's, <gasps> let's, okay, let's, okay, LeBron James from Space Jam or Ace Ventura from Ace Ventura? LeBron, LeBron James. LeBron James is correct there. Yes. Go with your gut. I think you got I, I was going to say this. Ace Ventura. I don't know if that would be problematic in this day and age. <laughs> so well, I feel like they're the, probably going to go for LeBron. Right. There's problematic things in that movie for sure. I'm like the character that could probably like disassociate yeah. with that stuff. But yeah. Uh, okay. Ted Lasso from Ted Lasso or Bill Murray from Space Jam. Bill Murray's apparently problematic, so I'm going to say Ted Lasso. <laughs> Ted Lasso is correct. Let's hope Ted Lasso <laughs> never ends up being problematic. Uh, Scorpion from Mortal Kombat or Carlton Banks from Fresh Prince? Mm, okay, well, I'm going to say Carlton just because the emote would be the dance. Right, it's, it just makes too much sense. The answer I mean, is yeah. Scorpion, Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, finally, Rachel Green from Friends or Godzilla from Godzilla? Basically the same character. I mean, Godzilla. Yes, Godzilla. <laughs> that's right. Although, what did Rachel Green do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Spill coffee on you if it's like in <laughs> early seasons or something. I don't know. Right. Yeah. It, really, if you're gonna have any of the characters that you have, Ross, because of course he's the largest friend, so he would just eat the rest. <laughs> ah, what incredible feature I'm gonna pull there. <laughs> what is Ross, the largest friend? <laughs> Simply not eat the other five. <laughs> Oh God. Okay. Let's see. I said I would ask him questions. So let's let's hit the button or answer yummy, two questions. Yummy, yummy. yummy. Oh, Here's some grub snack questions uh, from Fran. Do we know what's happening, if anything, with the supposed Golden Eye remake on Xbox? Uh, we don't really know for sure, but the things I've heard suggest that they are in the same situation as Advance Wars. That game has a lot of Russian military iconography in it. Uh, there is just a ton of that stuff. There's levels where you're just going through and looking at statues of old Soviet era, you know, the leaders and stuff like that. So they uh, are probably going to keep holding back on that one uh, for some time. If they don't, if there is a chance they're going to release it anytime soon, 
August is that game's 25th anniversary. So I would look out for something to happen then, but more likely they're just going to keep holding on to it for now. Um, let's see. Uh, we just got a, t a tweet here from him. We partnered. Okay. So, uh, Xbox just tweeted. We partnered up with the musicians. It's Benny Blanco, BTS, big hit and Snoop Dogg to create something unheard of. And I, what do you think this is, Lucy? That's all it says. I Benny, mean, Benny Blanco, BTS, big hit. BTS, that's just BTS. That's just BTS. That's just BTS, right? Okay, yeah. and Snoop Dogg. And Snoop Dogg. I, I don't know. I mean, Something even, even a collab, like Benny Blanco is responsible for like most of the biggest pop hits of the last 15 years. Okay, like, so he's, okay, yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, no, he's not just in Dave. He's written like a bunch of super famous songs and it's his TikTok is also wild. Um, he just like shows dildos all the time. It, Sure. He's a very weird follow, but um, he is he's legitimately, I, I don't know, like a song? Like something for an advert? Something for a headset? Uh, right. I don't know. Put, uh, yeah. Uh, it's, put it's, them in it's Halo stops. Infinite? <laughs> yeah, put them in Halo Infinite. There we go. Uh, something unheard of. I don't know. It's it's mm. tough, to, tough to say what they're going for there. Uh, let's see. From Z Kretz, is Stray the perfect cat game? Uh, it's near being perfect, but I think uh, what I would want from like the ideal cat game is full like GTA, but you're a cat, like just walking around a city trying to uh, you know uh, build up your enclave of other cats and making sure that your the box you sleep in is decked out and has all the features you need. Um, that's what I need. How about you? Yeah, I mean there was there was Cat Simulator from a few years ago, um, I guess, but no, I like GTA, but you're a cat. Yeah. Like turf, like beefing with the, the wild dog gangs. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Hey, I already I already saw someone mention a jellicle. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here with jellicles. I've still not seen Cats, the musical, uh, the no, movie. Me I gotta neither. I need to me see neither. it. I've seen the musical. I've never seen the movie. Mm. Although shout out to IGN for their post yesterday, which was very funny. They just and tweeted it, out happy stray day and they posted a picture of um <laughs> Taylor Swift in, okay. in Cats. <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, from J Unite 2008 with Kojima officially having a deal with Xbox, is there any word of their plans for a game engine, especially with, since Death Stranding used Decima, aka Gorilla's game engine, will they have to start from scratch? Uh, my guess would be they would probably use something that Microsoft either has easy access to, or wh why not just use Unreal? Just let them use I was, Unreal. I was just about to say they'll probably use Unreal, but they did, did they, Unreal. they did say it was going to be like cloud based right so right it's gonna have a lot of it's gonna have cloud integration whatever yeah. whatever that's gonna end up meaning for a kojima game who knows exactly all right um cloud that just follows you around and <laughs> exactly so let's see we asked on monday do you think the government still needs to do something about loot boxes overwhelmingly 74.5 percent said yes 25.5 percent said no i don't know i feel like um this is asking for trouble whenever you ask for this kind of regulation because uh, gaming changes so quickly. Oh, hello, kitty. Hello, kitty cat. Uh, gaming changes so quickly that uh, it goes from uh, uh, like, okay, yeah, this thing completely uh, applies to what was happening in games to a year later being like, now this is preventing games from uh, developing in cool and interesting ways because we have this law and we have to work around it or something like that. But I, I, uh, the, the industry could have avoided this by being a little bit more uh, uh, diligent about about stopping developers from going too far they didn't and here we are so people still want uh, government to step in uh, where are you at with this lucy oh uh, i mean i've always kind of been of the opinion that something needs to be done rather with sort of ratings and enforcement because most of the time the people who are going to be buying these loot boxes are going to be the impressionable children um especially in games that necessarily like I think they certainly need to be regulated more closely in kids' games. Like, kids, anything that's marketed towards children and, like, ratings need to be enforced at the shop level. They often aren't. When I was younger, I would buy games that I was too young for online and just get them sent to me and no one would ever check anything. Like, it's it's wild how easy it is to do workarounds. Part of it is just because, like, so my my aunt and uncle were asking me, like, there is, like, this this kind of generation gap, right? of not understanding necessarily how stuff works online. Like I've had to walk people through 
like my aunt and uncle through how to set up certain things on PlayStation mm -hmm. or Xbox. And it's like, it's just not straightforward for certain for certain people. And mm -hmm. like, that's definitely part of the problem. In terms of regulating, there absolutely, there absolutely needs to be a limit on, you know, kind of win rates, odds rates. Um, it needs to be regulated as closely as gambling, maybe even more so just because, I mean, gambling should be way more regulated as well. Have you, have you seen that thing uh, that was yesterday about the... The slots on Twitch? No, I haven't. I'll find the link for you. But yeah, basically, there's like an entire category on Twitch, which is just slot machines. And you're just, is it like Twitch plays slots? Is that is that uh, sort of thing or what? Who who wrote it? I think it was uh, Ben Barrett. So you, are people just like watching slot machines, but they're not interacting with it? Or are they able to interact with them at all? Let me grab it. Okay, okay. slots on Twitch, the dirty truth. It's on... Um, for the win.usatoday.com and mm -hmm. basically it is the slots categories filled with gambling no one tells so, any no, no one tell jan about these things guys please everyone no. jan, stay quiet do not tell jan about do these not things tell jan. um yeah so you're a gamer report on it back in 2018 um the, it, the the implications for the platform's younger audience and then it's been festering and then it's had a massive growth rate recently because of crypto and uh wow all that okay shit. So, yeah, I, yeah. It, 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 these are the kinds of things where, like, yeah, these things um, absolutely do prey on 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 vulnerable people with with addictive personalities and stuff like that. I mean, that's true for a lot of things. So it's like, where do we draw the line? Well, hopefully, we can figure out figure that out and keep at it. And it seems like um, there are always more things that could be done before we even like go to like straight to like banning these things or saying this is not allowed in video games. Uh, just providing more data, like more transparency to your own behavior. Uh, to players so they know how much money they've spent and stuff like that. That's the kind of thing that I think can go a long way uh, yeah. to, to derailing people from going too far. Okay, let's uh, let's ask a poll. Um, uh, you know, what? I'm going to ask this one. Let's see. Do or have you gone back to No Man's Sky or any of its updates? Game mess mornings, and we'll re we'll talk about that one tomorrow on the show oh let me hit the poll button before i forget to do that yes no there we go okay uh and with that uh lucy what is happening on giant bomb for the rest of the week oh well we've had to uh backlog's not feeling very well so we've had to push terminator film and 40s unfortunately but that will be happening as soon as possible we've got a new jeff jeff's bizarre adventure today albama Arcade Pit. Uh, what else have we got going? We've got a lot. Jess's Jess's hot takeouts on. Um, yes, please watch that. Stanley everybody. Parable, please watch because it's great and she put a lot of uh, effort into it. Um, what else we got? You know, let's see. We uh, uh, later this week we will have uh, the Halo co-op stream should still be happening on Friday. Uh, unprofessional Fridays. We got we we have an idea for that. Uh, looking forward to see if we get that together, but. Uh, uh, we're think about doing a whole theme for that one, sort of like what we did last week, but maybe for a different game this week. Um, uh, Forza Hot Wheels Quick Look, uh, that I think that might be getting filmed here pretty soon. That'll probably come out tomorrow. So yeah, a bunch of stuff still happening. And voicemail dump trick, of course, and then and then yeah. Uh, and Lucy, you got you have anything happen over at, at Gamespot? Uh, so we got Gamespot after dark tomorrow right after voice no dump truck yes yeah, right so. after dump truck so i'll be going into the office which will be very fun um we also shot uh me rory and tam uh i was i was the annie leibovitz shooting those two <laughs> with the new shirts yesterday so if you're in the premium uh, behind yeah. the scenes channel you can take a look at some of our art um <laughs> And then what else am I working on? Oh, well, it's performance review season over here. That's so what I'm, you're really I'm working, working on. on. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing those today. The deadline is at 2 p.m. for me because they're doing it on East Coast time. And I thought, oh, no. I, had until, I, thought I had until end of day Pacific and they were like, no, it's East Coast. I so. just joined, so I didn't have to do that. I just had to. Yeah, uh, you're fine. I just had to write reviews for other employees. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, this is like, they seem great. <laughs> I don't know. Everyone seems cool. So, yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to get out of here, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Lucy, thank you so much for joining me. I always appreciate it. Uh, it's always a good time hanging out on Wednesday. Uh, thank you all to be, for being the best audience in gaming. And until the next morning mess, have a good one. Take care of yourself. And goodbye. Bye.